everyone, in this video I'm going to show Mailbox Administration in Office 365 Exchange Online. My name is Jasmine and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking or cloud pro fast. Before jumping to Mailbox Administration in Exchange Online, Office 365, here is a brief overview of what Exchange Online is and how it works. Exchange Online is a cloud-based messaging and collaboration platform offered by Microsoft as part of various Microsoft 365 subscriptions. It essentially replaces the need for traditional on-premise email servers by providing a secure and scalable solution hosted on Microsoft's robust infrastructure. Exchange Online provides secure and reliable business email with features like inbox management tools for organization and filtering, powerful search capabilities to find specific emails quickly, message composition and formatting options, Shared calendars allow for scheduling meetings and appointments, managing resource allocation, like conference rooms, integrating with other calendars for better visibility, create and manage a central list of business and personal contacts, organize contacts with groups and categories for easy access, create to-do lists to stay organized, track progress on tasks, and set deadlines and reminders for tasks. To access Microsoft Exchange online, click on the Exchange option in the Microsoft Admin Center. Now in Microsoft Exchange, under the Recipient option on the left pane, you will see the Mailbox option. Click on it. Here you will see all the users on the left side. The top bar has the following options. The first one is to add a shared mailbox. This option allows you to create a new shared mailbox. A shared mailbox can be used by multiple users who are granted access, making it useful for teams that need to monitor and send email from a common email address. The second option is the mail flow setting. This setting is likely related to the configuration of how emails are routed within and outside your organization. It can include rules for directing incoming and outgoing mail, applying filters, and tracking messages for security and compliance purposes. The fourth option is Refresh. Clicking this button will refresh the list of mailboxes displayed on the page. This is useful for updating the view to reflect any recent changes or additions to the mailboxes. The last one is Export Mailboxes. This feature allows you to export the data from selected mailboxes, which can be useful for backing up mailbox contents or migrating to another service. Now, if I click on any user here, a pop-up opens up with a bunch of different options. The first one shows the general information, which includes name, contact, and email ID. Now here you can see the option of managing email address type. This option allows administrators to configure and manage the different types of email addresses associated with a user's mailbox. For example, a user may have a primary SMTP address, like userexample.com, and additional addresses for receiving mail, such as aliases or legacy addresses. Now when I click on it, you will see there are two types of addresses. Here you can see that I cannot delete the SMTP email because it is the primary email. I can create an email by clicking on Add Email Address Type. Here you can either use the SMTP type or create your custom email based on your company's name. Another option you can see right next to the organization is Delegation. In Exchange Online, Delegation allows you to grant specific permissions to other users, enabling them to access and manage your mailbox to a certain extent. This functionality is helpful for scenarios where you want someone to assist you with email management tasks or provide them with temporary access to your calendar for scheduling purposes. Under the Delegation option, there are three types of permissions to other users. The first is Send as an option. This permission allows a delegate to send emails from the mailbox as if they were the mailbox owner. The recipient sees the email as coming directly from the mailbox owner, not the delegate. The second is Send on behalf. This permission allows a delegate to send emails on behalf of the mailbox owner. The recipient sees the email as coming from the delegate on behalf of the mailbox owner. And third is Read and Manage – Full Access. This permission grants a delegate full access to the mailbox, allowing them to read and manage the contents as if they were the owner. 
Now let's say I want to add a delegate for sending an email, so I will click on this edit option and then click on the add members. From there I will select the desired member for the role. There is the same process for the other two options. The next setting is the mailbox. Here under the mail flow settings, there are a bunch of different options that help in managing the mailbox. First is the message size restriction. This setting determines the maximum size of messages that the user can send and receive. It's set to 35,840 kilobytes for sent messages and 36,864 kilobytes for received messages. Now if I click on Manage Message Size Restriction, I can edit the default range of size to the desired one. The second option is Message Delivery Restriction. This option controls who can send messages to this mailbox, allowing you to restrict messages from certain senders or allow all messages. Now to add restriction, click on Manage Message Delivery Restriction. Here you can block messages either from all senders or from selected members. You can add members of your organization by clicking on Add Members. Further, you can add a restriction on users from whom you can accept messages as well. The third is Email Forwarding. Email forwarding simplifies managing multiple inboxes by consolidating them into your Central Exchange online mailbox. It offers a basic backup option by sending copies of emails to another address, although security practices of the receiving service apply. Temporary forwarding ensures important emails reach someone while you're away, like during vacations. Organizations can set up forwarding rules with keywords to trigger alerts for critical messages. Here, by default, there are no current forwarding settings configured for this mailbox, but you can set up forwarding by clicking on Manage Email Forwarding. Now first turn on Forward all emails sent to this mailbox. Next, you will see two options. One is forwarding to an internal email address, and the other is forwarding to an external email address. For internal email addresses, you can add any of your organization's members, and for external email addresses, you can manually add it. The next option is Mailbox Policies. It lists policies related to sharing, role assignment, and address book policies. The shared policy controls how users can share their calendar and contact information with others inside and outside your organization. It can be set to allow varying levels of detail to be shared. The role assignment policy defines what permissions the mailbox user has to perform certain tasks within their own mailbox, like managing contacts, creating inbox rules, or setting up delegation. The retention policy determines how long email items are kept before they are automatically deleted. It helps in managing the life cycle of emails and other mailbox items for compliance purposes. To make changes to the retention policy, click on Manage Mailbox Policies. Here you can manage the sharing policy, role assignment policy retention policy, and address book policy. Here I haven't defined any of the policies, so that's why the default options are only available. The address book policy specifies global address lists, offline address books, room lists, and address lists, which are visible to the mailbox user. It's used to segment users into specific groups to view different sets of data. Now on the last, there is Others option, which also contains some management options for Mailbox in Exchange Online. The first one is Custom Attributes. This allows you to add or manage custom attributes for the mailbox, which can be used for various purposes like filtering or creating rules. To add any attributes, simply click on the Custom Attributes link. Here you can add up to 15 attributes. The next management setting is Automatic Replies. Here, you can set up or manage automatic replies, also known as out-of-office messages, for when the user is not available to respond to emails. To add automatic replies, click on Manage Automatic Replies. Next, turn on the Automatic Replies features. After that, you set a time frame for sending the automatic replies. Also, you can add restrictions on senders, either within the organization or from outside the organization. Once done, click on Save to apply the changes. The third option is to convert to a shared mailbox. This option enables you to convert the user's personal mailbox into a shared mailbox, which can be accessed by multiple users with the appropriate permissions. This is useful like if there is a help desk mailbox, you can share it with all the help desk users who have access to the same mailbox. To convert the mailbox to share, simply click on Convert to Shared Mailbox. Next, click on the Confirm option to apply the change, and after that the mailbox will be converted to shared. 
The fourth option is Mailbox Archive. If enabled, this feature allows for the archiving of old emails to keep the mailbox organized and prevent it from reaching its size limit. The current status is shown, and you can manage the archive settings here by clicking on Manage Mailbox Archive. You can enable and then give the archive a desirable name. The fifth option here is Mail Tip. Mail tips are informative messages displayed to users while they're composing emails. They can provide alerts about various things like the recipient being out of office or the message containing sensitive content. You can add mail tips by clicking on Manage Mail Tip. The next is Member of Group Membership. This shows the distribution groups or mail-enabled security groups that the mailbox is a member of. You can manage the group memberships from here. If you want to recover any of the deleted mail items, then use the Recover Deleted Items option. This option gives you the ability to recover items that have been deleted from the mailbox. You can hold mailbox items for a defined period using the Litigation Hold option. When enabled, this feature preserves all deleted and edited mailbox items, typically for legal or compliance reasons. To add a litigation period, click on Manage Litigation Hold, then turn this option on and add the number of days for which you need to hold mailbox items. In the last, there is a Recipient Limit option. This setting allows you to specify the maximum number of recipients that the user can email at one time. You can adjust the limit to the desired level by clicking on Set Recipient Limit. The last thing that I want to add is that to allow any of the users to manage the Exchange online, you have to assign the user the role of Exchange Administrator. Exchange Administrators have full control over all mailboxes within the organization. They can perform actions like creating and deleting mailboxes, resetting mailbox passwords, restoring deleted emails, and configuring advanced mailbox settings and security policies. To create a user as an Exchange Administrator, go to the Active Users option in the Microsoft Admin Center. Here you will see a list of all the existing users along with their licenses. Next, click on the desired user and then click on the Manage Roles option and you will see a long list of available roles. Now find and select the Exchange Administrator role. Next, save the changes. Under the Roles Assignment option, there is an Exchange tab containing further available roles that you can assign to the user for better management. These are sub-roles in the Exchange Administrator. The last one is Discovery Management. Members of this management role group can perform searches of mailboxes in the Exchange organization for data that meets specific criteria. The other one is a Help Desk. Members of this role group can only manage the configuration each user can manage on his or her mailbox. That's it for today's video. I have explained all the major concepts of managing mailbox administration in Office 365 Exchange Online. Let me know in the comments about this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.